Hello there. Welcome to Compass. I'm Geraldine Doog. Well, tonight, the most unlikely Sunday school preacher you're ever likely to meet. In the heart of Brooklyn in New York, Pastor Bill Wilson leads a Christian ministry that looks more like a TV game show. Pastor Bill admits he'll do just about anything to get young kids off the streets. But what really drives him and what's the price to be paid for such single-minded devotion? Tonight's program was made during a tumultuous time in Bill's ministry, from the devastating 9-11 attacks to his own near-fatal mugging. It's confronting stuff, but it doesn't shy from some tough questions raised by this maverick preacher's approach. I will do anything that's morally and ethically correct to get a kid under the sound of the gospel one time. Now, if you've got a problem with that, then you've got a problem here. Brooklyn, New York. With over two million inhabitants, it's home to some of America's worst inner city ghettos. With gun crime, crack addiction and poverty rife, it's a hard place for kids to grow up. But Brooklyn's kids have an unlikely savior. A 54-year-old maverick preacher known to them as Pastor Bill. Everywhere we go, the people want to know who we are. That we are the yoke of this. In a converted brewery, Reverend Bill Wilson runs a Sunday school known to the kids as Yogi Bear. It's the biggest of its kind in the world, and each week it reaches 20,000 kids from all over New York. With a fleet of old school buses and nearly 400 staff and volunteers, Bill Wilson has found a way to get kids coming to church that would never normally go. Hey, man, let's do this thing! Let's do this thing! Let's do this thing! But it's no ordinary Sunday school. The reason the kids come here is because it's more like a TV game show than anything you'd expect to see in a church. It's a high octane mix of games, prizes, and Bible quizzes. And Pastor Bill is its host. Both hands, both hands, both hands, wiggle your fingers, please. Wiggle them faster, faster. Simon says, put your hands on your hips. Simon says, look straight up. Simon says, say good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Jesus. Then let's sing it with my lady God. But Bill Wilson is not in this for the fun of it. Once he's got the kids' attention, he has a serious message to deliver. Everybody in this room has a choice. You can end up like some of your sisters, in a mess, with a bunch of kids, not married. If that's what you want, it's waiting out there for you. You can end up like your brothers, like your uncle, like your nephew, like any of those people, and you know what I'm talking about. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. The whole key to the Sunday school is getting these kids to realize that there's options in life. The school system here knows that these kids probably will never graduate from high school. So what that does, that feeds into their mindset is that you're not going to make it. You don't have enough brains. Your parents were losers. Your relatives were losers. Everybody that lives in these neighborhoods are losers. So you're destined to be a loser too. Hey, hey, you think it's funny? Okay, I'm gonna throw you both out. All right. Sit there and shut up. People do that kind of stuff because nobody took the time to sit them down like we do here every week and train them. You wanna be an idiot? 
You want to act like them? Go home. Home for many of these kids isn't much of an option. Most of Bill's young congregation come from the no-go areas of New York. The notorious projects. Government housing that sees some of the worst of New York's crime. Our God, you save us and the fearful deeds answer our prayers for justice. I'm continuing from where I was at. 13-year-old yeah. Scotty found his way to Bill Sunday School from the Brooklyn Projects. I live with my grandmother for all my years. It was rough because the, na because the neighborhood that I lived in was a lot of shooting, a lot of fighting and stuff like that. And really from there, when I, I grew up, I, I used to hang out with the wrong crowd. I used to hang out with other people. I used to steal, go, to, go out to toilet the rust, used to steal, stuff like that. And then one day, I just seen the light. John, I met John Galindez, my bus captain, and he taught me about God. And now I'm coming here, and my whole life has changed. My grandmother could tell you that. My aunt, everybody could tell you that. Morning. How you doing, sweetheart? Morning, baby. I love you. You doing good? Bill has been teaching kids about God for over 20 years. Baby, what's up? How you doing? I'm in here. You good to go? His own conversion to faith happened after he was abandoned by his mother at the age of 13. My mother and I were walking down the street, and it was a hard time. You know, my dad was gone, and you know, the typical American dysfunctional family. And we were sitting on this culvert going over this drainage ditch, and uh, she looked at me and she said, I can't do this anymore. She said, you wait here. And I was almost 13, so I was old enough to know what was going on, but not quite old enough to understand all the circumstances around it. And she got up, and I remember watching her walk away. And I sat there for three days, and she didn't come back. She never did come back, ever. Finally, after three days, a Christian man, he was a neighbor, stopped. He picked me up, paid my way to this Christian youth camp. Uh, I've never been to church in my life, you know, never once. But that night, sitting there all by myself, not knowing how to pray, for the first time in my life, I felt like somebody loved me. It doesn't make sense. But when you come into the presence of God, you don't always need a counselor. You don't need somebody to explain it. And it was from that night that something happened. Couldn't explain it then. I understand better now. But so every week when I drive my bus here in New York, and I pick up the kids. Now you know who I'm picking up. I'm picking up me. You good to go? Yeah. Let's do it again. Come on, girl. Bill Wilson's Brooklyn Sunday School has become so successful, it's attracting people from all over the world. Like Paul Sorey, a 21-year-old youth worker from the north of England. When I was a teenager, I was, what, 16? I heard Bill Wilson speak at this big uh, Christian conference in England and uh, I was really struggling at the time with the whole Christianity thing. But this guy was just going for it, he was just so on fire, so passionate. And I thought if I could go there, if I could just learn and train how to do this sort of thing, that would be absolutely be so valuable to bring back to England. A happy song. Paul will join 28 other interns as they learn how to entertain the kids and teach them the Bible. With a six-day-a-week intensive schedule, it's a cross between Fame Academy and a boot camp. The rules of the internship, well, I think they're pretty simple. You got to clean your house, not like the bathrooms and the kitchen, and you can't have a girlfriend or boyfriend for four months. So we can focus on what it, we are here to do. I think it's a good thing. One of the most challenging jobs for the interns will be the home visits. Every one of the 20,000 kids who come to Sunday school is visited each week by members of staff. It's proved central to the success of Bill Wilson's approach. So Michael, when you, um, you first came to New York, you came as an intern, yeah. 
Paul goes out with more experienced staff into one of Brooklyn's more notorious projects. I feel like I've been shopping with my sister with all these. Huh? I feel like I've been shopping with my sister with all these. Right. Smells really bad. Yeah. It stinks. So I hope everyone's up on the floor. Just be just... It's very much that there's a door there, and I just didn't know when that door opened what to expect on the other side. Hey, how you doing? My name's Paul. You okay? You've just seen 15 people living in one apartment and there was cockroaches on the floor and there was just like, there was trash on the floor and it was almost like they'd just given up, you know what I mean, they'd given up. You just fat for that meal. Yeah. This, yeah, for you. And you two boys. That's nice, isn't it? There might be another one. There's more, there's more in this book. And you know what? You're going to meet parents. You're going to meet teenagers. You're going to meet kids that you're going to think, these guys are hopeless. No, they're not hopeless. They just don't have hope. The gospel is what brings the hope. And the conduit, the messenger of that is you guys. And if you can get one thing in your head, you literally are, for most of these kids, the only Jesus they're ever going to see. Because this is not about a job. It's a lifestyle, my friends. This has never been a job to me. That's what, you know how to take a vac if vacation. If I have one more person tell me I look like I need a vacation, I'm going to slap somebody. I've looked like this for as long as I can remember. It doesn't get better than this, folks. If you're expecting me to look better, you're going to be sadly disappointed. Uh, Phil does scare me. <laughs> he's a scary guy. Um, I think it's just because he's so focused, and he's so passionate, and he doesn't, he doesn't mess around. You know, he, he hasn't got time for nonsense. It's a bit like, you know, it's, it's a bit like being in the army, and Bill's like this, this sergeant or this, this general, and it's like he walks in and everyone kind of stands for attention. It's like, oh, you know, quick smart yourself up and everything. To reach kids that live too far away from Brooklyn to be bussed in, Bill has bought a fleet of 17 trucks and adapted them into mobile Sunday schools to take his message out onto the streets. It'll be Paul's first chance to get up in front of New York's kids. All right, boys and girls, I got your Bible story for today. It comes out of the book of Job. Everybody say Job. Job. And this is what happened. One day, he was just chilling, doing his own thing, hanging out in his house. And one of his servants came on the door and knocked on the door. And he walked in. This is what he said. He said, the oxen were plowing and the donkeys were grazing nearby. And so people attacked and carried them off. They took all the servants and killed them, but he was the It was only the first time I'd ever done anything like this. I uh, didn't know really what to expect. Didn't know how many children were going to come. And uh, it was very, very strange and quite scary. Exciting. But I'd never met, I didn't know these children, you know, different culture, um, total different upbringing, total background. Didn't know whether they'd accept me or anything. What's, what was number one, the more, number one important thing? God loves me. God loves me. <laughs> God loves me. Yeah! The children here, I think that they need about three times more attention than the children back at home in England. I think because they don't get the affection, they don't get the love, they don't get all the attention that they, they need, whether it's at home or at school or whatever. So when you're there, they just literally hang off you. Oh, my friend, yeah, if he wants a drink, he'll have to come and get it. Well, that's OK. I can't give her them if they're not on the table. I'm telling you, I'm going to give them two. I'm going to give them one. Sit down and you'll get a juice. You've got one. We'll What's that there in between your legs? Yeah. Don't lie. Well, it's good. You're clear, you're loud, you change your voice, your expression. It's good. Just use your body language a little bit more. Like, do a lot of that. Oh, yeah. White therapist. 
I was nervous. You were nervous? Yeah. That's alright. That's good. That means you take it serious. That's alright. Keeping this show on the road costs almost seven million dollars a year, and it's up to Bill to raise it. You got the one suitcase, clothes, bag, and cart? Every week, as soon as the Sunday school is over, Bill has to leave New York and go in search of funds. Hey, have a better day. <laughs> I'll see you, man. Oh, it'll be fine. All right. He's amassed over 15 million air miles, flying to speaking engagements all over the world. But most of his funds will come from the mega churches in middle America. This week, he's in Arkansas. You know, I actually considered a bonus if I actually get in the right city at the right time and actually find the church. So. People say, what are you going to speak about? I don't know. I guess it's Woody Allen who said 90% of life is just showing up. And I think that's, that's kind of how I feel at this point. If I can find the place and get there on time, I'll let the Holy Spirit do the rest. You obviously are being a little... Sometimes I am. <laughs> it depends on who wants to know and yeah. what's the purpose. <laughs> After years of preaching in thousands of churches, Bill knows how to work an audience. Everywhere he goes, Bill retells the story of how he was abandoned by his mother. The presence of God, folks, moves people. My turning point was right there when nobody wanted me. Nobody wanted me. That's why I live the way I live. That's why I've done what I've done. And that's why I'm going to do it till the day I die. Because when you As well as soliciting donations, Bill encourages churchgoers to sponsor individual children. But being out on the road for almost half the year is the part of Bill's job he finds the hardest. You know, it's, it's the thing that we joke about, but we have to kind of make it a joke. You have to laugh or else you cry all the time. Is that you have to do these kinds of things in order to do what it is that you're really supposed to do but you don't have time to do what you're supposed to do because you're out here doing this to raise the money to do what you're supposed to do that you can't do as much as you want to because you're out here doing this. You know, every once in a while you get a couple of hours on Sunday night afterwards, like after we're done with the service, I'll come back here and stand out here and just look at this abandoned car wash for a while because I know tomorrow it starts again. So I got a few hours tonight that's just mine. And I'll look out here and I'll Think about the week and the day and the night, and uh, thank God I had a chance to do it. Back in New York, Paul is also out on the streets promoting the Sunday School. So what's your names, guys? What are your names? Elijah. Elijah and Joshua. Elijah and Joshua. Elijah. Very good. My name. Yeah, my yeah. name is Paul. Biblical names. I got them from the Bible. First time he went to Yogi Bear, I'll never forget it. He came home and I had a broken lamp. And you know, the lamp that came out like this with a, a pole? And he went around screaming, God is in the house. Everybody stand up and praise the Lord. Pray, praise Jesus Christ. He has now entered the building. And I said, oh, you loved him. You loved it that much. He does. He loves it.
But not everyone is as receptive to his message. Why, why won't you take one if it's about, if it's about Jesus? Because I'm Jewish, do you mind? That's is fine. That, have you made it to be Jewish? Of course why everyone's got a free will. Gee, you'd never know I'm a Christian. Why, why, why do you say that? Because everywhere I go, you bother us. Television, the radio, walking down the street, standing in the park. Can't go anywhere without you annoying everybody. You, you have no respect for anybody else's religion but your own. To brainwash the children yeah. with Yogi Bear, which is a child thing that draws them in. That's right, yeah. Exactly. But it's not to brainwash them, it's to offer them something that they can yeah. choose and decide for yeah. themselves. We would never force it. Of course not. No, I just, I, you don't force it on no, the child. Not no, not at all. Let me see. If you accept Jesus, right. you go to heaven, and it's all wonderful. If you don't accept Jesus, you burn in hell with the devil. Oh, right. but you don't force it on little children. But the boogeyman comes out to get them unless they accept it. No, that's, but that's, You're we would never talking. force it. Can you respect the fact okay. that I am Jewish that's and fine. happy that yeah, I am that's Jewish? That's fine. Bye. Have a good day. Back at the brewery, Thursday nights is youth club. So come on in, guys. Come on in. 11 and 12, right in this room. 13, 14, 15. Many of these teenagers have grown up through Bill Wilson's Sunday School. This week, Bill's arranged a hip-hop dance competition. But keeping their interest often demands more extreme methods. This week's challenge is to eat live crickets. Paul is beginning to question the techniques Bill is using. The internship was run on this, this logo, this motto that you do whatever it takes. And if it takes loading the truck up with candy bars, then that's what it takes. But I got really frustrated with it and I thought, oh, I hope you're getting what we're saying. I hope that you just, it's going in. And some of the children would argue with you and some of them would fight over the chocolate bars and snatch from others. And I thought, I just want to take all that away. I just want to stop giving candy out for one, one Sunday school session just to see if you'll still come. I will do anything that's morally and ethically correct mm -hmm. to get a kid under the sound of the gospel one time. Now, if you've got a problem with that, then you've got a problem here. If you've got to stand on your head and gargle peanut butter to get a crowd, then you do that, okay? If we have to give away hot dogs, we're going to do that. If we have to give away Christmas stockings or Christmas gifts because a kid may not come for any other reason, guess what? We're going to do that. And if you're one of those folks that will say, well, you're bribing them, you call it whatever you want to call it. I don't care what it takes to get a kid into Sunday school, I'm going to do it. Because if we went out on the street and said, hey kids, come on, we're going to have an exciting Bible study, I've never been to one of those. <laughs> now maybe you have, but I haven't had the pleasure. we got a brand new thing. You guys are going to flip out when you see this thing. It is so stinking cool. We're going to put hundreds and hundreds of dollars in this box. We're going to turn on a fan. This money is going to be blown around, however much money you can grab out of the air and stick it in your pocket, you get to keep. A few weeks ago in the church we had a money machine Yeah. and I told this family about it and um, the family decided they wanted, they wanted to go that Sunday. The first time they'd ever been to church and they went and they've kept going ever since. Really? Yeah. And the guy 
the, the uh, father, he got saved and he brings all his kids. He brings oh. the whole family. So the family that we visit now come to church now? Yeah, they come to church every Sunday. That's excellent, isn't it? Yeah. Every Sunday, the first Sunday I went, I liked it, and from then, kept going. It's like I can't stop. Like the kids, um, when they come to pick them on Sunday, they get excited. I get excited too. <laughs> like Pastor Bill once said, you have to you have to give them something for them to come. You have to like if you tell them, oh, we just come to church, we're gonna be preached, they're not gonna come. You gotta offer them something, you gotta bribe them. If not, it's not gonna work. Like, say, oh, we giving out um candy, then they'll come. As when they come. When they come, they're going to come for the candy. But as they come, they're going to get ministered to. It's midterm, and Paul has another 5 a.m. start. I woke up at, like, 11, half 11, and then I woke up at half past one in the morning, and I, I just couldn't sleep because I, I knew I was going to get up at that silly time. So I'm like, is it time yet? Is it time yet? Keeping Bill Wilson's Sunday school going is a relentless task, with staff and interns working 10 hours a day, six days a week, often against the odds. But nothing could have prepared them for what was about to shatter their routine and test their faith. Right, we'll just go through it together. Paul is at an early morning staff meeting. A plane just crashed into the World Trade Center. Are you serious? Serious. Just now. So pray for that. It's just crazy. What? From the roof of the Sunday school, staff and interns look on as the Twin Towers collapse. Oh my God. Oh my God. No, no. No, my God. Tower went. The whole tower. Oh my God. No, it was, I prepared myself to live in the ghetto. I prepared myself to work with the children. I prepared myself that there might be danger, there might be violence. But how do you prepare yourself for something like that? Um, business is done, so you can go ahead. We've got you all set up. Okay, is everybody there? Caught out on the road on a fundraising mission, Bill calls in on a speakerphone to rally the staff. Listen to me. We've got to dig deep. We've got to dig deep emotionally. We've got to dig deep spiritually. And there may be some of you sitting there, particularly some of you interns. Maybe I need to go back home. Maybe I'm not cut out for this. Maybe this is tougher than what I thought. I wish all the stand. All over the auditorium stand. God bless America. Land that I love. Stand beside her. September the 11th raises questions of faith for the whole of America. But Bill was quick to take advantage of what he saw as an opportunity to spread the gospel. Okay, I'm just going to roll and I'll stop in between. I'll stop in between times. Let me just take a minute and explain to you what has happened since the buildings have come down. We've used a phrase in our staff it's become a horrible opportunity. Now, we are watching things happen here that we never thought would happen, but out of it, out of the ruin, out of the rubble, we're gonna expect to see something. We can say it with assurance. That's, that a miracle is gonna come out of it. Back at the Sunday school, he's determined to boost morale amongst his bewildered staff. I need you in rank. I need you in rank. I need you in your place. I need you in your position. I need to know you're going to be there, no matter what happens. Sick, not sick, get them in staff meeting. They'll live. 
You say, that's harsh. No, it isn't. If I could drive the bus with tuberculosis, you can be here. If I could be here with hepatitis, you can be here. Amen? With rumors of further terrorist attacks on the city, the interns are sent out to reassure the kids. I'm just going to talk just for a couple of minutes, and it's really important. I really want to get the point over. And I guess it's easy to kind of look at all the bad things and look at the things that have been happening and feel a bit scared, yeah? I was scared. Chad said that he was scared. And sometimes we concentrate on the bad things that happen in life, don't we? And we concentrate on the bad 